As many can attest to, Las Vegas is a cruel, cruel mistress. But the Browns essentially went to Las Vegas today with house money and still found a way to bust out. Your Locked On Browns post-game show is up now. A lot to talk about. Appreciate everybody for being here. You are Locked On Browns, your daily Cleveland Browns podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends your daily delivery of all things Dog Pound LGB on the LOB, the Locked On Browns podcast, brought to the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Your host, Jeff Lloyd, we appreciate everybody who makes Locked On Browns their first listen every single day, become an everydayer. Be here for all the action. Don't miss anything. Subscribe to Lockdown Browns YouTube channel. The show is always available. It is always free wherever you get your podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Cleveland Browns lose twenty to sixteen in Las Vegas to the Las Vegas Raiders. Inexcusable loss. Absolutely inexcusable. This team came in facing a Las Vegas Raiders team that could not run the football. Well, Las Vegas Raiders ran the football. This team has struggled with jet sweeps for ever. Guess what the Las Vegas Raiders did? Jet sweeped you. I don't think it was a wide receiver who played today for the Raiders that didn't get an opportunity for a jet sweep. Las Vegas Raiders can't stop the run. Guess what the Browns couldn't do today? run the ball. And I don't want to hear it was over four yards per carry. I was very aided by a late run late in the game by Jerome Ford. Solid effort, certainly by the offense, to try to get back into this game late. You've got to play 60 minutes in the NFL. There's no questions, ifs, ands, or buts about it. You can't play a solid first quarter. You can't play a solid fourth quarter. Sleep, disappear for the middle 30 minutes of the second and third quarter and expect to win games in the NFL. It's just not going to happen. Uh, Offensive line play is offensive. They're just not good. Uh, I don't know if Dewan Jones is 100% right now, um, but he looks a shell of the guy that we all thought was going to be a, you know, 10-year starter for this team that we got to see last year in his rookie year. You know, there was some talk that Dewan, you know, maybe even grew over the offseason. And I'm sure having the knee surgery hampered any ability he was able to do as far as, you know, keeping himself in the best shape he possibly could. Um, but he's just having a really, really tough time of it right now. He just he can't get to anybody. It's not that everybody in the league got quicker. There's no way that happened. So we kind of have an idea. You know, I think DeWan Jones will round back into shape. It's probably going to take a few more weeks to get back into shape. But, you know, not working there right now. This team is still having issues with pressure off the middle. Uh, it didn't tackle well on defense. Amari Cooper, the interception, you know, the, the ball out of his hands into the interception, just an absolute nightmare of a play. Just brutal, absolutely brutal. Um, the holding call on Nick Harris on the 82-yard touchdown to Amari Cooper. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Yeah, I understand he is Christian Wilkins. He is one of the better interior players in the entire NFL. But his hands were inside the entire time. That is making a call for the sake of making a call. Inexcusable call. Inexcusable call. Now, look, I'm not normally the screenshot. Look, Deshaun Watson played really well today. Extremely well today. But, and it's not trying to be critical or overcritical. At the end of the day, who's the first person that people are going to look at in any game in the NFL? It is going to be the quarterback. Now. Do I necessarily agree with the play call by any means? No. No. Jordan Aikens, fourth and three, with the game on a line, should not be anywhere near the beginning of the read progression. There are several ways you could have looked at that play unfolding. Was it possible that they were hoping and they were just going to either go back shoulder to Amari or fade it to Amari Cooper? Probably Quarterback, quarterback got a good jam on Amari. So you see Amari by step two or step three is already kind of even healed. So, you know, he was kind of out of that play from there. Jordan Akins 
was probably, you know, running a route was either going to be underneath or to the back pylon. I'm not throwing the ball to Jordan Higgins with the game on the line. But what you do see in that play, and you see, and you do see the safety to the left side, he is already committed to the left side. There is no way that safety is readjusting himself and getting back to the middle of the field. And Reed's not even making that play, and that's significant. So let's stop with all that. Was he rushed? Yes. But still, that safety is committed to the left side. side. Even if Deshaun just takes a slight step to his left, reloads, there's a wide open touchdown if he throws the ball to the goalpost because that's exactly where Jerry Judy was going to be sitting. Um, <laughs> a lot of what I've seen on social media, he wasn't out of his break yet. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Balls are thrown in high school when guys aren't out of the break yet. Like that is that, that you got that has you have no idea what you're talking about if you're saying the receiver's not out of the break yet. That has nothing to do with nothing. You get your head on a swivel before your body's ready. Balls that that's the way it goes. It goes back to high school, it's done, college is done. Of course it's done in the NFL. You throw it before the guy's out of his break. What are you afraid he's actually gonna get a run out of the back of the end zone and you threw it for no reason? I mean, come on, guys. Look. Deshaun's in a really tough spot because even if he plays well, the team doesn't win. He takes the he takes the L, and that's like likely where everybody's pointing the finger. He doesn't play well, the team wins. Guess what? They're all pointing the finger at Deshaun Watson. There's no way for him to win here, and I, we all know why. And it makes things really, really difficult. But that play right there, Jerry Judy was open. Jerry Judy was going to be wide open. And fourth and three, game on the line. You got to have it. You absolutely got to have it. You cannot, you got one thing. And even, they call the timeout, they get over there, never so people, oh, we burn the timeout. You could have got the ball back. Brother. Fourth and three, game on the line. You, yeah, you take the timeout. You make sure you got everybody on the same page. And most likely the way that meeting should have closed before everybody went back on the field is, okay, this, that, that, and Deshaun, whatever you do, don't get sacked. Because anything can happen once the ball's in the air. Unfortunately, it broke the way he did. Deshaun played great today. I thought he really, really played well. And it's a shame he didn't get the touchdown pass to Cooper. The interception that Cooper put on his docket, certainly a shame as well. But if you could have just made one more play, the Browns would have stolen a game, honestly, that they should have never lost. Cleveland Browns are one and three. Ravens are one and two. Bengals are one and three. Steelers are three and one. It's a tough one, though. Cleveland Browns should have been two and two walking out of Vegas today. We're going to continue your latest Lockdown Browns. Appreciate everybody for being along for the ride. Yes, the weather and the outdoor venues may be dying down, but that still doesn't mean we can go see our favorite plays, our favorite music, our favorite sporting event indoors, and we can use Game Time. They have a new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets for your favorite live events even easier. Game Time Picks filters out all the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. Game Time Picks. The curation makes it easier to save more on sports, concerts, comedy theater, and more. The all-in pricing toggling. This feature shows the total up front with no surprise fees at checkout. So for me, you hate to go from window to window and then see all of a sudden you think you're getting a great deal. And all of a sudden with each window as you're trying to get to your checkout, it progressively gets to get higher and higher. You go all in, all in pricing the toggling. You won't have to worry about that. You get a panoramic view from your seat in the app before you buy. The lowest price guarantee your game time will credit you 100% of the difference. Your purchase is covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the entire ticketing industry. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use code Lockdown NFL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N N F L for $20 off. Download game time today. What time is it? Game time. (sighs) 
Welcome back. I appreciate you all for listening to your post game lockdown Brown show. Your host, Jeff Floyd show is always available, always free wherever you get your podcasts. Make sure you become an everyday or subscribe to lockdown Brown's YouTube channel. And of course, of course, we appreciate everybody who makes lockdown Brown's their first listen every single day. End of the day, it's the same with what's been going on for the first four weeks of the season. This team is just not a consistent product right now. They're not consistent anywhere on the offensive side of the ball. They can't run through four games. They have not thrown the ball for over 200 yards. Their offensive line is patchwork. And even the guys that you have who have been regularly playing or not playing well, defensive side of the ball, they really can't stop the run. They're struggling. In pass defense, they're not getting after the quarterback nearly as much as they did in years past. I think it was two sacks, a couple of uh, couple of hits on the quarterback. I still think the hits on the quarterback were five or less today. Um, Isaiah McGuire, you know, certainly give you know shout out there. It was a great play, um, kind of turned the momentum and got the Browns back in the game. Certainly with an opportunity to win it. You know, fifteen year veteran Rodney McLeod picks it up, runs down the sideline. Rodney, you're a fifteen year old veteran, fifteen year old NFL veteran. We don't do backflips in the end zone anymore, man. Those things hurt on Monday morning. Uh, missed extra point. Certainly hurt. But, you know, with the amount of time that was there at 20 to 16, you're going in to score a touchdown, not to try to tie the game with a field goal and play for overtime. Because let's be honest, what kind of faith do you have in this team to go into overtime and get it done? Who, who's got the who's got the faith in the Browns to say, I just tied up here. We'll go ahead and take the game in overtime. You'd be lying to yourself if you said it is true. Um, I, I, I'm really concerned about the defense. You know, J-O, J-O-K, certainly notwithstanding, good player. But, I mean, you went into this game knowing there was no Devontae Adams. You know, they didn't have Michael Meyer. You know, they're, they're tight ends. You know, if you heard the pregame, kind of talked to you about Harris Bryant now, didn't we? Certainly had a couple plays here today. Um Gardner Minshew just kind of battled, kept his team in the game, you know, made some, you know, key throws here and there. Uh, but, you know, I'm concerned this defense is, you know, nowhere near where it was last year. And last year it seemed so odd that a team that was just, you know, put together with a new old defensive coordinator just hit the ground running like they did. But they're struggling right now. Um, the defensive line is just not consistent enough. You know, this was something I think. You know, for years, this team has just not had really, really good defensive line play. And I think last year was just like we 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 got such a great effort from the defensive line. Probably got spoiled and just assumed this was going to be the norm going forward. But not, obviously, um, you know, at least for now. Um, you know, Jim Schwartz is... Jim Schwartz is a guy that really likes and believes in what he does and his man coverage and, you know, I, I, I'll get the pressure we need so I can get you. But, it, you know, every now and then, man, you, you got to understand that, you know, people are ahead of you. You got to be able to, you know, differ things up. And I think that's one thing that you know, maybe Jim Schwartz is kind of struggling with a little bit right now. Um, you know, it certainly helped to have a guy like Mike Hall in here, get one more consistent pass rusher, a guy like Maurice Hurst as well. Certainly guys that were all contributing last year. Um, but this – Las Vegas Raiders, by no means, this offensive line was a world-beating group. Um, but they ran the ball on you. They kept their quarterback well-protected. And, you know, it's just becoming more and more difficult, you know, to see where this defense, offense, everything on this team, it, it, it's going to correlate into, you know, finding ways, you know, to win games. You got to go to Washington next week. Jaden Daniels has been electric. He just put together two incredible starts as a rookie in six days. Six days. You got to go face this kid in his own house. And keep in mind what Jaden Daniels just did with two games straight on the road. You got to go play in his own house. Just tough. Just tough, 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 tough. You know, so, you know, everything's got to get better. You know, and obviously that should be the goal. You know, offense, who knows, you know, our Conklin is Conklin. I mean, because, I, you know, we were so concerned about getting Jack Conklin back to play left tackle. I think the biggest thing right now is to get Jack Conklin back to maybe play right tackle and give Dewan Jones a breather. You know, big man struggling right now. You know, Zach Zinter, you know, first NFL start today. There was probably some good, some bad. Ethan Posick tried to gut it out, tried to keep sneaking back in that game, and his angle just wasn't having it. You know, Nick Harris, you know, I don't care. It was not a penalty. It was not a penalty by any means whatsoever. Certainly would have changed the way it would have looked, you know, for Deshaun Watson would have had a much higher statistical output. You know, and again, for anybody listening to this, I'm not putting this on Deshaun, but I'm just saying that play right there 
everybody in the world is going to put it on Deshaun. And they should. It should always be on the quarterback. Fourth and three at the nine, 30 something seconds to go. Chance to win a game. If it's not on the quarterback, who is it on? Oh, well, the coach could have called a better play. Yeah. If that's the case, sure. But they're not going to sit down and talk about, you know, what play the coach should have called. They're going to talk about how it was executed or how it was not executed. And they're going to talk about the quarterback. It's just the way it goes. It's just the way it goes. It's a reason it's the most demanding position in the entire world of sports. There's a reason. Because it comes with a high level of scrutiny. You know, I'm not pointing out and just, you know, this, that, and the other thing. But it was there. It was there. It was there to be had. You know, and this is, you know, second week in a row now. Where... You tiptoed around, didn't get things done. You had a lead, lost the lead, and you had a chance to go seize a game. Great teams do this all the time. Kansas City Chiefs won 17 to 10 today. Played like dog do for about 50 something minutes. And then all of a sudden, got an opportunity, capitalized, and won a ball game that they easily could have lost. This is what good teams do. Cleveland Browns are not a good team. This is two weeks in a row now. Could have found a way to beat the New York Giants at home. Could have found a way to beat the Las Vegas Raiders in Las Vegas. You would have been three and one. And for as dysfunctional as this team looks, because not much would have changed. They still would have looked just as dysfunctional. It's a lot easier to talk about a team's weaknesses when they're three and one. And it's a whole different thing to talk about, you know, a lot of separate and individual and but all definitely it all collects together as a whole when you're one and three. Well, luckily the division hasn't had a hand yet. Baltimore very easily could be one and three come tomorrow night. And so you're sitting right there in second place tied with the Cincinnati Bengals only at one and three. Steelers somehow lose to <laughs> let's just get this out of the way. You know, everybody was talking about Joe Flacco today. You know, and obviously what he did for the Colts and coming off the match. If you happen to see the numbers that Kareem Hunt put up today for the Kansas City Chiefs. You just can't make this up, Browns fans. You just absolutely cannot make this stuff up. Um, it just always comes back. It always does. It's, it's ironic, but it's also ironic to the point where it's pathetic and it makes you want to see counseling or, you know, call out of work on a Monday. But the Cleveland Browns right now got a lot of serious issues. And is this season saleable? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Because when you say that, you know, they have no running game, your offensive line's got issues, the passing game's struggling, your quarterback, better day today. Defense is not the same defense we thought we had from last season. It's really hard to justify that this team is all of a sudden going to circle the wagons and, you know, become a really good football team and, you know, win a bunch of games. We'll continue on. The latest Lockdown Browns. Appreciate everybody for being here. Hey, NFL fans, you can start the season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, -play, and a much more on the same page where you place your bets. You'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. The latest Lockdown Browns continues. I'm your host, Jeff Floyd. We appreciate you all for making Lockdown Browns your first listen every single day. Every day crowd, if you're not part of it by now, make a new plan. Stay and subscribe to Lockdown Browns YouTube channel. Show is always available. It's always free wherever you get your podcasts. Cleveland Browns lose 20 to 16 in Las Vegas. Um, 20 to 10, get a big opportunity. Isaiah McGuire forces a huge fumble. Ball dances around, rolls around. All of a sudden, Rodney McLeod picks it up, makes it 20 to 16. Dustin Hopkins shoots it left. Now you're down four. You get an opportunity. Get the ball back. Make some solid plays. Get a big run from Jerome Ford. You've got fourth and three from the nine with the ball game on the line. In this scenario, probably could have tied it up and gone to overtime. But again, ain't no way in the world I want to go to overtime. I don't trust this team to go 
play another 15 minutes. It was tough, you know, and, you know, I, it, it's weird. And, you know, I've talked, you know, during the week, you know, it's, you know, there was some Coop today, certainly. There was some Jerry Judy, a good amount, but there's no Elijah Moore. Like, why is there a way that Ness can't get everything involved and everything going and everything cooking? You know, is there just not enough game planning for that? I just, I just don't understand why they have the weapons that they do, but yet a lot of guys are just out there and essentially stationary pieces and just the involvement does not involve them. You know, it was nice to get the, uh, you know, the kid tight end a touchdown. Jordan Aikens did have a couple of receptions. And again, for the 15th time, I am not throwing the ball to Jordan Aikens with the game on the line. Not happening. No. Just because he's playing in the place of David Njoku does not make him anywhere near David Njoku. No. So where does this team go from here? Got to go to Washington next week. Probably a chance to get David Njoku back. It'd be nice. To get one of the tackles back and maybe kind of get a hopefully a little bit more competent offensive line, maybe an opportunity at some sort of running game. And then, of course, there's the big purple elephant out there who's going to return to practice this week. I'm not saying I think Nick Chubb is ready to return this week. Basically, I think they have a three-week three, three week window for him to be activated. I'm not necessarily sure it's going to be this week. You know, probably think it's not going to be a road game at all. So you probably would think it would be that week seven tilt with the Bengals. But the problem is, is where is his team going to be by the time they face the Bengals in week seven? His team is one and three. And you just lost two games in a row to the New York Giants and the Las Vegas Raiders. And neither of those teams are on the level of the Washington Commanders. You know, Phillies, maybe they're not on the level of Philly. <laughs> But this is where the Browns got to go the next two weeks, you know, and it's just a team. And, you know, there was some chippiness on the sidelines. And, you know, I think, you know, Dewan's. I mean, I think Deshaun's got to do a better job of, look, we all know the offensive line's not getting it done. We do. And it's really, really difficult for the quarterback, obviously. And for all the pressure that Deshaun is under, you know, and when he finally feels like he's getting a groove going and just, you know, getting too much pressure and this has been going on since week one we all know this but you can't be you know snapping on the field at your guys you know there's certain guys that can get away with that in this league and unfortunately Deshaun Watson is not one of those guys you know yeah you're trying to motivate yeah you're trying to get you guys geeked up but the perception of it is is it's not motivation it's criticism and, you know, some people have thick skin, take it the wrong way. You know, I think Jameis is just trying to play peacemaker to everybody involved here. And, you know, I'm sure we're still going to get some that are, you know, chirping for Jameis to get in there. And, look, I don't think he's going to fix it. And I do think that, you know, I think we're getting better signs out of Deshaun. And just, you know, we need everybody collectively, every individual Every group, every unit, the secondary, the linebackers, the defensive line, the offensive line, the wide receivers, the tight ends, the running backs, the quarterback. So everybody separately and individually and everybody collectively on this team needs to start playing better football. You're one in three. By no means are you out of it yet, but it ain't looking pretty. It's certainly not looking pretty. You've got a long, long way to go to try and right this ship. And, you know, your goal is simple. Go out and beat the Washington Commanders, get this to two and three, go out and be the Philadelphia Eagles, get it to three and three. Then you can scrap everything and start anew and, you know, try to win some games from there. But, you know, for what we thought this team could be, and look, you know, maybe we're kind of duped. We probably were all were duped. You know, maybe that's why we didn't see guys play in the preseason. Maybe that's why much people didn't play in the preseason because they knew there were longer, bigger issues that they maybe didn't want everybody else to know, like just how banged up the offensive line was or that the guys that were going to play offensive line were struggling. Uh, it's just, you know, sad state of affairs. I really, really thought this team was was going to be even better than last year. I thought we were going to see the best version of number four in his time here in Cleveland. You know, 
because at least you could say in the past about Deshaun was at least when he was out there, the team was winning games. Unfortunately, that is not currently the case right now. Uh, uh, you know, I'm not ready to say it's bleak. I'm not breaking out and going into my draft due diligence just yet. <laughs> Although either way, it's going to be soon enough. Um, Coach Fansky has got to get better. Andrew Barry's got to work better on getting this roster and getting the best 53 players on this roster. There's just no question about it. This is it, it, It's a non-working collective product right now. And if it doesn't change immediately, 2024, is, it'll be like a great, great summer. It'll be gone before you knew it. And they're very, very close to that happening to them. I am Jeff Lloyd. I'm your host here at Locked on Browns. As always, we appreciate you all for making the show your first listen every single day. Everyday crowd is a bunch of filthy animals, but they're my filthy animals. I suggest you join them all. Become a filthy animal yourself. Subscribe to Locked on Browns YouTube channel. Show is always available. It is always free wherever you get your podcasts. This has been your daily delivery of all things. Dog pound. Browns lose 20-16 in Las Vegas. 1-3 in three on the year. LGB on the LOB. Let's go Browns. Yeah.